The former president has a newly released interview tonight with, with TV's Dr. Phil McGraw, who's shown himself to be quite the sympathetic interviewer when it comes to Donald Trump. It's billed as part one of a two-part interview. Tomorrow's will be uh, with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Here's the former president trying to correct the record uh, as he sees it on a comment he made about voting four years from now. They demonize you a lot. They make a big deal out of the fact that you said you're only going to have to vote one time. Yeah. You like me, you're only going to have to vote one time uh, ever or whatever your quote was. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm not Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. You know why that was? It was said, and with a smile, Christians, for whatever reason, don't vote very much, you know, proportionately. NRA people and people that feel very strongly about the Second Amendment, they're not voters. I don't know why. Maybe it's a rebellious streak. And I said to the Christians, we got to win this election. If we win this election, I'll straighten everything out in less than four years by a lot. Then you don't have to, it doesn't matter. In other words, I'm saying, you don't have to vote. It doesn't mean we're not going to have elections. You're going to have elections, but you have to vote this time. Back now with CNN senior political commentator Scott Jennings and Adam Kinzinger. Congressman Kinzinger, I mean, if someone was concerned before about the former president telling Christians they'd never have to vote again if they voted for him on Election Day, is this new explanation going to put their minds at ease? Oh, uh, probably not. I mean, I, I thought that they were kind of picking up on Trump saying that was a bit of a uh, overkill for some folks. I mean, I, I think it was pretty obvious in listening to Trump. He was saying basically, just vote for me, I'll fix everything, which he won't, by the way. But anyway, that that was his point. So I never thought this was a this was a big deal. And uh, but you know, sitting sitting down with Dr. Phil probably will put some people at ease. But uh, I think if folks were concerned about it, I mean, let's keep in mind he did say he he'll be a dictator for a day, even if he was joking there too. This he put this all together and it brings some concern. But I think on this specific comment. It was a bit of an overkill for people to say he's he's saying there's never going to be an election again. Well, funny you mentioned the dictator on day one because he also talked about that with Dr. Phil in this interview. I, I want to let's play that. But what they use a lot was, I'll be a dictator. And I said jokingly on Sean Hannity, who's a great guy, I said, no, Sean, I want to be a dictator for one day because I'm going to get going with drill, baby, drill. And I'm going to strengthen the borders to a level like you've never seen. I only want to be, and after that, I'll never be a dictator. So I said it nicely. I said, and I said, one day, because I want to do the energy and I want to strengthen the border, one day. Uh, Scott, I mean, the thing about that is that Sean Hannity actually did try to get, I mean, Sean Hannity was being, trying to be very helpful with Trump in that initial interview. And sort of was clarifying, like, hey, I just want to make sure, like, you, you know, you're not really going to be dictator. And his response was, well, just on day one. So he didn't actually help himself all that much. Do you think this clears it up? Yeah, look, I, I always thought this was overblown, too. I agree with Adam, by the way, on his first comment. I thought the, the thing about uh, uh, that Adam, I thought Adam was exactly right. So this dictator thing, when I watched it, I, I thought he was sort of half joking, but also just trying to make a point. Like, if I could, I would change these policies right now because it would make... The United States better. What's sort of amazing about it is this whole dictator thing, it has become the basic underpinning of the entire Democratic campaign. I mean, every speech, every surrogate, every set of talking points they send out to people, you hear, I mean, you've heard it on this show. Well, he does I have mean, a thing for dictator. I mean, he does have a thing for strong. H.R. Uh, McMaster in his new book, I had him on last night, writes about this, and McMaster was flummoxed and concerned. He, he told his wife, you know, toward the end of his year there, like, I can't understand the hold that Putin has on this guy, Duterte. And finally, H.R. McMaster came around to, at the end of his book, writing that he thinks, and this is from memory, so I'm, I don't want to misquote him, but basically that, uh, you know, that by getting the admiration of strong men, of dictators, that uh, Trump, it'll make Trump feel like he himself is a strong man. Look, I, I, you know, I've, I've never served in the Oval Office with Trump, so I can't, I can't speak to McMaster's uh, in his uh, impressions of it. I just know that on this particular comment right. and the way it's been construed by the Democrats, I think has been completely like a lot of comments. You know, like the bloodbath thing, that's also been blown out of proportion. Trump does occasionally say things that then are like little crevices where you can get a foothold and start, you know, climbing what I think is a is an untrue wall. 
And Democrats have, have really blown these comments up. Now, whether people actually believe it or not, I don't know. I mean, you know, he was president for four years. He was not a dictator. He was constantly flummoxed by Congress uh, on occasion. So he, he pretty much operated like a, like a president does. Scott, do you think he's dictator curious? Adam. Oh, sorry, Adam. You, Adam. So what did I say? What did I say? Oh, that was sorry. Me. Adam, yeah, sorry. I, I, I think he is dictator curious. I mean, look, I, you know, to my friend Scott, I, I agree with a lot of, look, I think the broader context is about the dictator. It's not focusing on just the one comment. But let's keep in mind, he would have stayed in office on January 6th if uh, law enforcement would have allowed him because he tried to overturn a free and fair election. So that kind of stuff comes into play with all these comments. But I agree, if you're going to just focus on that one or two things he said, there's there's broader broader issues. And I think actually the Democrats are, are, are and need to do a better job of bringing that big, you know, around in a bigger, a bigger point. Adam Kinzinger, Scott Jennings, thank you again. Appreciate it.